Exploding cars, death-defying falls, and bayonet stabbings. It's all in a day's work for Hollywood stunt artists, at least when things go right. These scenes didn't go right. Jeremy Fitzgerald has performed stunts in hundreds of films and TV shows over the course of his career, creating an impressive showreel along the way. While his biggest gig might have been doubling for Liam Hemsworth in The Hunger Games Mockingjay Part 2, it was on a movie involving Chris Hemsworth that Fitzgerald ended up in serious danger. 2012's The Avengers. The experienced stuntman narrowly escaped getting decapitated after he got tripped up during a 30-foot fall from a building top. Fitzgerald told TMZ how he was supposed to get hit by an arrow, presumably fired by Hawkeye, and then free fall from a ledge. On the way down, his foot got caught, and he slammed his head against the building's brick wall, narrowly missing a jagged drain pipe. In the end, he escaped with his head but was missing a chunk of his scalp. He didn't let that stop him from climbing back up there for more takes, however. A Marvel spokesperson said in reply to TMZ's report, Jeremy was fine. He slid briefly along the side of the building. He got right back up and did several more takes. Australian stuntman Scott McLean was doubling for Ed Helms in The Hangover Part 2 when he suffered a critical head injury during a car chase, forcing hospital staff to put him in a medically induced coma. The accident took place during the filming of the scene in which Stu, Phil, Alan, and Mr. Chow are being chased by Russian gangsters after stealing their monkey. They swerve through traffic as Stu hangs out the back passenger window, narrowly missing a truck as it comes around the corner in front of them. The drivers involved got their marks wrong, and McLean's head was hit by the truck. According to a Daily Mail report, McLean was feared dead by his colleagues after the impact, and while he ultimately escaped with his life, his lawyers claim he suffered permanent brain injuries. His partner, Raylene Chapman, who is also a stunt performer, said, There was so much damage. He was a mess. He used to look after me. Now it's my turn to look after him for a change. I'm thrilled, because this time last year, I, I was barely able to move. Chloe Grace Moretz already had 20 credits to her name when she won the part of foul-mouthed 11-year-old assassin Hit Girl in 2010's Kick-Ass. None of Moretz's previous roles have been anything near as physically demanding as the Hit Girl gig, so she put herself through months of intense training and stunt work to get herself prepared for the part. The stunt coordinators were impressed with how well she adapted and learned the ropes, though they were remiss to let her do the more dangerous scenes despite her willingness. Looking back, she's probably glad. When asked about the worst thing her double went through while making the 2013 sequel, Kick-Ass 2, Moretz said a stunt rig led to a serious onset injury, explaining, She cracked her head open. They used a hydraulic system, and they did it too much, and it just pulled her an inch too far, and she cracked her head on a bar. Using fake weapons in battle scenes is a lot safer than using real ones, though sometimes they can ruin an otherwise perfect shot. That was exactly what David Ayer was trying to avoid in his gritty 2014 World War II flick, Fury. Brad Pitt stars a Sergeant Don War Daddy Collier, alongside an ensemble cast including Logan Lerman, Shia LaBeouf, John Bernthal, and Mike Campania. Ayer put the cast through an intensive boot camp and had them partake in heavy sparring as a unique method of bonding before the shoot took place in England, which led to a few flared tempers. But while the film's violence was all staged, there was one moment that wasn't. A 35-year-old stuntman was stabbed with a bayonet, though the 9-inch blade luckily went straight through his shoulder. He was airlifted to Oxford's John Radcliffe Hospital. A spokeswoman confirmed, There has been an accident between two professional stuntmen which happened in a rehearsed action sequence. It was an accident. It is obviously very unfortunate. The spokesman added that the man in question was laughing and talking as he was loaded into the helicopter. The 2015 remake of Point Break may have been torn apart by critics, but it does contain some of the most audacious stunts ever attempted. Talking about the film's death-defying wingsuit scene, base jumper Jeb Corliss told Men's Journal, The danger is off the chart, like just impossible to even comprehend. It's probably the most dangerous stunt that has ever been filmed. It wasn't base jumping that led to the worst injury of the shoot, however. It was the killer surf off the coast of Tahiti. Luke Bracey's stunt double Laurie Towner is an experienced big wave surfer who's used to being wiped out in the swell, though he took a bad hit while filming scenes as Utah. He took to Instagram to describe his injuries, saying, I got myself a broken jaw, some stitches in my lip and eyelid, whiplash to my neck and back, and a couple small puncture wounds that went through my neck and into the back of my mouth that apparently just missed an artery. Every Mission Impossible feature has at least one stunt sequence that seems to put Tom Cruise's life in danger. And in Dead Reckoning, Cruise rides a motorcycle off a cliff 
and parachutes away as the bike plunges into oblivion. Like all of the stunts in the Mission Impossible films, the motorcycle gag was meticulously planned, with crews going through hundreds of hours of skydiving and jump training. This is far and away the most dangerous thing we've ever attempted. And as crews told Entertainment Tonight Canada, all the preparation came in handy when the stunts didn't go exactly as hoped. Cruz was testing the jump from a helicopter when the stunt went wrong at the worst possible time. Right after he opened his parachute, he told ET Canada, You can see when I opened, I was in the wrong position, and the parachute turned into the side of the mountain. Had the parachute pulled him into the mountain, the impact might have been fatal. As Bruce Willis' stunt double for nearly a decade, Larry Rippenkroger faced elaborate stunt set pieces on a regular basis. One, however, got the better of him in 2007, while working on a night shoot during filming for Live Free or Die Hard. Rippenkroger descended a ladder on a fire escape in downtown Los Angeles and either lost his footing or missed a handhold. As he told the Los Angeles Times, he fell headfirst three stories and though he was able to break his fall, he suffered serious injuries. He recalled, I had compound fractures of both wrists, smashed the right side of my face, fractured my skull on the back of my head, couple of broken ribs, and a punctured lung. His injuries required a series of surgeries, including the insertion of titanium plates in his face and wrists. They were funded in part with a grant by the Taurus World Stunt Awards Foundation. Rip and Kroger not only recovered but also returned to work on numerous films, including Guardians of the Galaxy Vol. 2 and The Tomorrow War. The 1992 movie Wind, a drama about the 1987 America's Cup yacht races, is probably best remembered for a gruesome accident that occurred during filming. Directed by Carol Ballard and produced by Francis Ford Coppola, Wind spared no expense to depict the excitement and breakneck thrills of competitive sailing, including location shooting in Utah and Western Australia. The accident took place in the waters off the southwestern coast of the latter location in March 1991. The sequence involved multiple 12-meter yachts and chase boats, which are smaller boats used by yacht owners and crews for additional transportation and storage. Two of the yachts collided with a stationary chase boat, sending stuntman Trevor Hellier and stunt coordinator Christopher Anderson overboard. Hellier suffered chest and abdominal trauma, while Anderson fractured multiple bones and ruptured an artery in his right leg that later required partial amputation. Busted me up a fair bit, broke my pelvis and arm, and, and uh, I lost my leg through lack of blood flow. Despite this traumatic setback, Anderson has continued to work as a stunt performer and coordinator, as well as an actor and second unit director. Enough words have been written about the disasters on Waterworld to fill the remains of the Exxon Valdez, but we won't cover them all here. Oh, thank God. Briefly, though, stars Jean Triplehorn and Tina Majorino were thrown from their sailboat and required rescue by divers, while star and producer Kevin Costner was strapped 40 feet in the air to a sailboat mast as an ocean storm blew in, leaving him unreachable and in danger for a half hour. Often excluded from the litany of mishaps on Waterworld is stunt performer Norman Howell's brush with death. Howell served as Costner's stunt double and put himself in danger for multiple scenes, like the one that saw the marina thrown off a mast into the sea. During a deep-sea dive sequence, Howell surfaced too quickly and experienced an embolism, an air bubble that escapes from the lungs and enters blood vessels, which can have lethal consequences. He was flown to a hospital in Honolulu, where he recovered after spending time in a decompression chamber. World War I combat pilot Frank Tolman parlayed his love and talent for flying into a career as a stunt pilot, flying supervisor, and supplier of vintage and historic airplanes for films and television. Among his credits as a stunt flyer was The Great Waldo Pepper, a 1975 action drama with Robert Redford as a World War I vet turned stunt pilot. Tolman crashed his stunt plane three times during the making of the film. Not surprising, given its sheer number of complicated aerial stunts. Two of the crashes were planned and he walked away from them and scathed, but the third, which occurred during a routine landing, was unplanned and sent Tolman into the side of a hill. He suffered two cracked vertebrae, a broken rib, and a lacerated scalp that required 58 stitches. Two weeks later, Tolman was back to work and overseeing flying sequences for television while also participating in air shows. Every stunt performer has had their share of anecdotes about injuries and jawed while filming. But Bobby Holland Hanton seems to have more than his share of behind-the-scenes horror stories. Hanton has served as stunt double for some of Hollywood's biggest leading men, including Chris Evans, Tom Cruise, and Ryan Reynolds. And for years, he's doubled for Chris Hemsworth. We know each other. He's a friend from work. Hanton detailed to Daily Mail Australia a litany of the gruesome wear and tear his body endured while making the Thor films, Mission Impossible Fallout, and Green Lantern. Hanton ruptured multiple spinal discs while making Green Lantern and Thor Ragnarok. 
which left him with a neurological condition called drop foot or foot drop syndrome, which causes paralysis in certain foot muscles that makes it difficult to lift or move the front of the foot. Hanton further said, I've also snapped my groin clean off the bone and blew my shoulder out, and during Mission Impossible, I popped my rib out on set. It's fair to say that I've had my fair share of injuries. Talk about an understatement. Stunt performer Joe Watts suffered what he later described as life-changing injuries after falling more than 20 feet while rehearsing a stunt for F9 The Fast Saga in 2019. The stunt required Watts to be thrown from a balcony by Vin Diesel's double, but a safety wire malfunctioned, causing Watts to plummet to the soundstage's concrete floors. His injuries, which included a skull fracture and brain trauma, left him in a coma for five days. Watts later had to undergo extensive therapy to treat cognitive and physical problems caused by his fall. It is dangerous. I mean, I'm a stuntman. I've seen some bad news today. Yeah, that's um, awful. It is awful. Watts sued FF9 Pictures Limited, the film's production company and a subsidiary of Universal Pictures, for more than $1.2 million. The company accepted the blame for the accident in 2023. For Robert Zemeckis' Romancing the Stone, stuntmen Vince Dedrick Jr. and Terry Leonard doubled for stars Michael Douglas and Kathleen Turner for a scene in which their jeep is swept down a river and over a 70-foot waterfall. A retaining cable that was supposed to catch the jeep and allow both performers to leap free of the car and into the water failed to do its job, sending both men and the vehicle into the impact zone, a raging whirlpool that would absorb the jeep but most likely spell instant death for the stuntman. Leonard in an interview with Sports Illustrated, and while it was happening, I knew I was dying that this was the end of my life. Thankfully, Lennon was able to not only break free of the whirlpool, but also get out of the water thanks to a group of fishermen. Before he directed Smokey and the Bandit, won an honorary Oscar in 2013, and inspired the character of Cliff Booth in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Hal Needham was a fearless stuntman in films and television. Needham was an innovator who introduced airbags to break stuntmen's falls. He took his fair share of hits as well. He told the crowd at the 2013 Academy Awards that he had broken 56 bones over the course of his stunt career. Recounting some of his most dangerous stunts for Stunts Unlimited, the stunts organization he co-founded in 1970, Needham singled out a car rollover for the 1974 movie McHugh with John Wayne. For the gag, he and stunt coordinator Ronnie Rondell built a cannon loaded with a three-foot telephone pole and an explosive charge, and attached it to the car beneath the driver's seat. When the charge was fired, the pole would shoot down and launch the car into a roll. Finding that one charge would only lift the car a few inches, Needham and the crew loaded four charges into the cannon, and Needham took off. The resulting blast sent the car flying into the air before it landed on its roof. Needham awoke in the hospital to find he had six broken ribs, a punctured lung, a broken back, and three missing teeth. British stuntman Rocky Taylor began his career in 1962 with Dr. No, and has continued to perform stunts as recently as Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. Along the way, he lent his expertise to numerous films, including doubling for Sean Connery in Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Unfortunately, Taylor also suffered a horrific injury in 1985 while leaping from a burning building on the set of the movie Death Wish 3. The stunt required Taylor to leap out of the window of a 17-foot tall building, while flames raged around him. A miscalculation caused an explosion that not only set Taylor ablaze, but also sent him plummeting to the pavement below. He was hospitalized with a broken back and pelvis, and burns to both his face and hands, but recovered and returned to stunt work. In 2011, he recreated the stunts that almost killed him by leaping from a flaming platform in London. This time, he walked away from the gag. Why did he want to? He told the Daily Mail, It was something I had to do, and I'm glad to have finally done it again and got it out of my system. A busy stunt and fight coordinator, Andy Cheng began his career as a member of Jackie Chan's legendary stunt team. Cheng served as both a stuntman and an on-screen combatant in films like Rush Hour and its sequel. The latter film gave Chan the opportunity to repay Cheng for his service by saving his life during a stunt sequence that went awry. One of the film's fight sequences required Cheng and another stuntman to fall off a moving boat, but only one of them emerged from the water. Cheng was trapped under the boat. I hit my head, I hit my head, I hit my head. I try to grab something, I cannot grab anything because it's so snippy. As his air began to run out, Cheng felt a hand yank him out of the water. It was Chan himself, who had reached under the boat to rescue his team member. Cheng told ABC News, I felt like a god grabbed me and pulled me out of the water. A moment later, I would have been dead. He gave me a second life. 
When veteran stunt performers get together, what do they talk about? If the Mirror's 2021 conversation with longtime British stuntmen Greg Powell and Jim Dowdall is any indication, the conversation turns to the movies they made and the injuries they incurred while working on them. Powell and Dowdall both began their careers in the late 1960s and early 70s, and over the past five decades worked on some of the movie industry's biggest titles, including multiple entries in the James Bond, Star Wars, and Harry Potter franchises. They've both taken their lumps over the course of their careers, but only once did Dowdall come close to death. While filming Superman in 1978, Dowdall was supposed to leap from a trampoline and fall into another stunt performer. It didn't work out, as he explained. I didn't get quite far enough and my head hit the ground at his feet. I fractured three vertebrae in my neck. It was a serious injury, but it didn't keep him down. Dowdell has either performed or coordinated stunts in over 200 films, and even returned for Superman 2 in a small on-screen role. Veteran stunt performer Tony Angelotti's credits include The Amazing Spider-Man and repeat engagements as one of Johnny Depp's stunt doubles on three of the Pirates of the Caribbean films. The Disney productions required Angelotti to pull off some astonishing stunts, but one set piece in Dead Man's Chest not only ended his stunt career, but also nearly ended his life. In the scene, Jack Sparrow falls while wrapped in a rope, which unravels and holds him aloft by one leg. The yo-yo stunt required a descender, a wire rig that controls performers or equipment as they rise or fall vertically. For the stunt, Angelotti would plummet 80 feet and spin five times, while the descender operator maintained control of his fall. However, one time the brake wasn't on. The speed of his spin and descent resulted in severe injuries to Angelotti's pelvis, including internal bleeding from his femoral artery. He required two surgeries and spent a year in recovery while also contending with PTSD from the accident. Angelotti sued Disney, producer Jerry Bruckheimer, and the company's safety coordination team but lost. He later returned for the third Pirates movie and worked as a stunt coordinator and trainer. The 2008 James Bond film Quantum of Solace experienced its share of production problems, from script issues due to the 2008 WGA strike to complaints by politicians at filming locations in Chile and Bolivia. These were soon superseded by a trio of accidents that occurred during filming in Italy. The worst of these accidents sent two stunt performers to the hospital and left one in critical condition. After an Aston Martin employee crashed a DBS model seen in the film while driving it to a publicity shoot in April 2008, two stunt performers were injured near Lake Garda in northern Italy, when their car collided with another vehicle before crashing into a wall. The driver suffered a fractured cranium as a result of the accident, and was airlifted to a nearby hospital, where he was listed in serious but stable condition. A second stuntman came away with only minor injuries. Both stuntmen had also been involved in another accident one week prior to the Lake Garda incident that ended with one of the performers receiving 15 stitches. Daniel Craig told GQ at the time that the driver was recovering from the accident, saying, He was in a very bad way. We had a helicopter standing by with paramedics because that's the way it works every time you do a sequence like that, and they literally saved his life. Bob Miner rolled more than his share of cars over the course of his five-decade career as a stunt performer and actor. I've done stunts from fighting to driving. Miner began in action films in the 1970s and has taken his share of injuries over the years. But the car rollover in Blues Brothers 2000 almost cost him his life. During the stunt, Miner suffered a frontal lobe injury that impacted his short-term memory. Months of recovery in the hospital included learning to read and write again. Fortunately, Miner not only recovered those skills, but also returned to both stunts and acting in films like National Treasure. As he told the blog Just My Show, with the love of God and my friends, I was able to beat the odds in that accident, and I made it. While many Hollywood action styles would prefer audiences never see them in an awkward moment, martial arts legend Jackie Chan has been showcasing mistakes and accidents that occurred while making films for decades. While many of these outtakes, which run during the end credits, show off Chan's sense of humor, others highlight the dangers in many of his stunt sequences. He told the Sunday Mirror, I use outtakes at the end of the film to show fans that I get hurt, to show them that this isn't a cartoon. Outtakes have shown Chan breaking numerous bones and suffering countless injuries. However, Chan's worst injury and the one that brought him closest to death occurred during the making of 1986's Armor of God. The stunt required Chan to leap from a ledge onto the branch of a tree, but he wasn't satisfied with the first take. So he jumped again, and this time the branch broke. Chan fell almost 20 feet to the ground, where his head struck a rock and drove a skull fragment into his brain. The injury left him with a permanent hole in his skull covered with plastic, with which he often horrifies interviewers. Oh my god, yes, 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 yes! 
If there was a Hall of Fame for the actors who wore monster suits in movies, and there really should be one, Japanese actor Haruo Nakajima would be a star attraction. From 1954 to 1972, Nakajima destroyed Tokyo and other Japanese cities as the suitmation actor for Godzilla, Rodan, the larval form of Mothra, and many other kaiju for Toho Company's iconic fantasy science fiction films. Portraying the monsters required more than just stomping on elaborate miniature sets. The original Godzilla costume weighed more than 200 pounds and reached internal temperatures of 140 degrees. While subsequent suits were lighter, they all offered Nakajima limited visibility and offered little protection from explosives or flooding during scenes in Toho's water tank. Nakajima took his lumps as Godzilla, but faced death while playing another famous monster. In an interview for Sci-Fi Japan, Nakajima recalled being lifted by wires to the rafters of Toho's set while playing the flying monster Rodan. Suddenly, the wheel pulley raising one of the wires broke, causing the Rodan suit to go into a spin and plunge 20 feet to the studio floor. Nakajima recalled, But I fell into the pool on the set which was full of water. That saved my life. Winged suits are definitely hard. A decorated fighter pilot during World War I, Dick Grace's abilities caught the eye of silent movie western hero Tom Mix, who asked him to crash a plane into the side of a barn for an upcoming film. Grace accomplished it without a scratch and went on to become something of an expert in the art of crashing planes on film. One assignment nearly cost him his life. Paramount's Wings, which became the first film to win a Best Picture Oscar, tapped Grace to create several spectacular crashes for its story of combat pilots in World War I. One elaborate setup required him to fly his plane into the ground at a high speed. But upon impact, the restraining straps broke and flung Grace into the instrument panel. The accident left four of his vertebrae crushed and required a 17-week stay in the hospital. Actually, Dick was lucky to get out of it alive. As it is, he'll be in the hospital for at least a couple of months. Grace not only recovered but also became a published author, and even served as a combat pilot at the age of 46 in World War II. 